Alex, exciting times here at CTPE. You've just bought this new Swiss DT26 Tornos sliding head lathe. Why did you buy it? Um, well, basically, we, we decided to invest in a sliding head uh, style lathe, basically, because we needed um, to increase our production rates on some, some components, um, increase the volumes, and also try and do them in, in larger batches rather than just, just in time production, which is what we were doing on our fixed head lathes. We're going to have a look at some of the parts in a minute, but why Tornos? Um, we felt that they offered the best overall package and the most suitable for me machine for what our needs were. Um, there's several key features on the machine that we, we, we thought were better than the competition and that's why we went with them. This is your first slide in head lathe so it's, it's, it, it's a challenge really because you, you, you know, you're adopting a new method of machining. The machine I believe came with a, with a job pack which made you feel comfortable when you purchased it, correct? Yeah, yeah we, we, we opted for the job shop package which included the bar feed and some tooling items and, and, and everything we needed to get going and obviously like you said it's our first slide and head machine so we, we needed that sort of extra sort of security of a, of a package deal rather than just buying the machine as it was. Now the machine itself, let's talk about the speed of the machine, what sort of reductions you've, you've, you've seen on some of the parts that you've made since you've, you've had the machine installed here. Yeah, well, it's a very fast machine, um, 10,000 RPM spindles, both matched in equal power. Um, and basically, it's reduced our cycle times very significantly, around 70 to 80 percent, we, we imagine, on, on a lot of the parts, just because we never had a twin spindle lathe before. And obviously, having the two spindles um, really... Well, that's exciting. Let's have a look at the parts. I know you've got one in your hand. Just talk to us about one that maybe you have saved 70 percent on or 80 percent on. Yeah, well, th this part here, um, this would be... On, on our Y-axis lathe with driven tools um, would, would take probably around three minutes and then they would still require another operation on another lathe um, to do the other end, um, like I said, because we didn't have a, a twin spindle lathe, whereas this is done in one hit, 45 seconds. So you're looking at a reduction from about three, three minutes to approximately 40 seconds. And what's the volume of that type of component that you're making? Um, this one, we're making these in uh, 600 off. Um, so a reasonable size batch, um, but we've, we've made other components in larger volumes as well. What's important to stress here as well about the Tornos machine, that, 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 that I'm assuming is like a, a plastic component, yep. but the, this machine has 10 kilowatt power spindles on both the front and back, which means that for you as a subcontractor, it doesn't matter what material you're machining from, does it? Exactly, yeah, that, that's, that's one of the very attractive things about the Tornos machine is the fact that there's, you've almost got the power of a small uh, six inch chuck fixed head lathe um, on a sliding head, which a lot of the other makes sliding head don't offer that. What about the guide bush, non guide bush element? Was that an important factor in your decision, meaning you can go from one to the other? Yeah, definitely. We make a lot of uh, short parts, and so obviously being able to run in non guide bush mode um, enables us to save save money on uh, guide bushes by not having to purchase them, and also um, the remnant end on the material is a lot shorter. And, and the burning question: How long does it take you to change from one to the other? Um, well, we're getting faster each time we do it, but um, at the moment it's about 20, 25 minutes. But um, we, we know it can be done in about 15, but it's just practice. It takes time, I know, but yeah. even, even, at, even at half an hour, that's still quick to go from one method to another. Yeah, it is. It's very, very quick and quite straightforward. It's just eight bolts straight in and straight out. Now, the, the, the way this machine is configured, the back working and the front working means you can optimise your machining processes, but that, that also has an impact. Well, with driven tools, you can do that as well, can't you? You can manoeuvre the driven tools around the machine to do milling on the front end and the back end. Does that help? Yeah, that's correct. Yeah, it's modular, so basically any of the live tool stations are interchangeable. Um, and like you said, having two um, independent tool systems, the counter spindle can work completely on its own, um, and then whilst the main spindle is making another part. So whatever the part is, you, when you try and balance and do front end turning as well as back end turning, it yeah. doesn't matter how complex it is, you can try and get the cycle times down to a minimum. Yeah, yeah, we, I mean, we very rarely have a cycle time that's more than one minute, sub 40 seconds. And, and I know that the, you can take some of the tool holders off this machine and put them onto some of their other models as well, which is important if you do ever buy a second. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, um, that's, the modular system's very, very good design. And obviously in the future, if we ever do invest in another sliding head, then we'll have that capability to do that. Now, what about the cutting fluids on this machine? This is, this is a good, good point as well, because there's always a, uh, it's a pretty contentious issue between cutting oils and coolants. What did you go for and, and why? And would anybody else offer you what you've got here? Well, as you can see, we're actually running a water-based uh, coolant, the same as what we're running on our other fixed head lathes and vertical machining centers. Um, and the reason why we wanted to run coolant is because a lot of the parts are for medical industry and they're plastic. Um, and we were worried about the effects of uh, neat cutting oil affecting those, those, those plastic parts. So we, we felt it was safe to stay with what we know, which is water-based coolant. 
Now, Tornos were the only company out there that would safely um, run water-based coolant and not have any detrimental effect. So that was a big, big selling point and was probably one of the biggest decisions that swayed it for us, really. What about high-pressure coolant, Alex? What's, what's the, the power on this or what's the, uh, the bar pressure and what does that give you? Yeah, well, we've got two, two coolant systems on the machine. We've got the standard flood coolant, as you'd expect, and then we've got a 20-bar high-pressure system, which has four programmable outlets. And, and basically what, what that gives us is the ability to control our swarf um, much better with the programmable outlets, because basically we can turn them on to direct the flow of swarf. Um, and also we can plumb it to go through through the back of a bore bar or through through coolant on a drill, etc. And obviously that, in, in plastic, it's helpful to control the swarf and uh, manage that. And then obviously things like stainless steel and aluminium, it's obviously evacuating the swarf much better when allowing you to machine faster. What is the pressure of it? It's 20 bar. And also another one was, was the Tysa software because it's important to be able to program these, these, this type of machine quickly. It's great if you can make a part in 20 seconds, but if it takes you three weeks to program it, you're snookered. So tell us about your experience with their software, the Tysa software. Yeah, the Tysa software is very, very straightforward and easy to use. Obviously, it's a bit daunting if you've never, if you've never done a sliding head programming and you've got two, two channels and two spindles to, to program. But how, how Tysis lays it out, it makes it so simple. All the complicated bits are done for you. You literally just write your, your front end turn in program and then your sub spindle turn in program separately. And then Tysis puts the two together and then you just export it to the machine and it's ready to go. And how accurate is it in predicting what cycle the cycle times are going to be? Yeah, it's very accurate. As long as, as long as you lay it out correctly, it will give you an exact cycle time and also parts per hour production rate. Um, so that's very handy for when you quoting parts and things like that, you can you get an idea of how long it's going to take you. Because you can't afford to get that bit wrong, can you? No, exactly. Now, the, the, one of the final points would be the access to this machine, the layout, how it's configured, the aesthetics of it. Was that part of your, your decision-making process as well? Yeah, exactly. Um, it's got a very large door, as you can see, and the very easy access into both the main and sub-spindle in the tool systems. Um, some, some of the machines we looked at have a, a much smaller working uh, envelope inside, and obviously accessibility can be a bit of a problem, but no, it's a very accessible machine and we, we, we find it very easy to set up and work on. So as a, as a big leap into this sort of new technology for you, yeah. how, how, what is the overall experience with Tornos and this for your business? Is it taking you into a kind of a, a different dimension? Yeah, exactly. Um, Tornos have been fantastic because obviously this, was, this is a, a, new, a new, new venture for us, um, Slide Ahead, so you know, we didn't have any prior experience and Tornos have been excellent. Their service and backup and application support and um, been very, very good. Um, no complaints there at all. And yeah, basically the machine has transformed our sort of turning into the business because we've gone from making parts in smaller batch sizes, producing those batches every week or every two weeks to, to run in sort of three or four months or six months worth of supply in one big batch on here because the cycle times are so quick. And obviously we're able to do lights out running as well. Um, with the bar feeder and everything. so And be assured that you're going to get accurate components in the morning. Yeah, incredibly accurate. Um, so not only is the speed increased, but the, the quality and the accuracy of the parts has increased as well. So basically it's a win-win situation. Good to see you again, Alex. Thanks. Excellent. Thank you, Paul.